Uh, my name is Martin Salin, and I'm the creative director uh, and the creator of Unravel. Awesome. So could you just give us a brief overview of what Unravel is and what exactly you are doing in the game? Uh, it is a puzzle platformer where you play this little character that's made of yarn, which unravels as you move, and you're trying to uh, make it through the world without running out of yarn, uh, and also using this yarn uh, to do all these like cool things, uh, interacting with the world. And it's a very symbolic game. It's uh, basically the whole idea is that this yarn is a symbol for love and the bonds between people, and your quest is basically about trying to mend a broken bond. It's, very, it's a very unique idea. Where did you come up with the idea for Unravel? Uh, well, it's, it started with that just that single thought. Like, what if, <laughs> what if love was an actual real physical thing? What if these connections that we make were like strands of yarn that actually bind us together? And, you know, and what would it be like to play as a character that was literally made from that stuff? Um, and then that idea sort of grew into... Uh, this whole concept of trying to make a puzzle platformer out of it and and I don't know if you've heard the story but before about this this doll that I made when I was out in the woods with my family and and just head buzzing with ideas that I needed to kind of express somehow so that's why I, I created this physical doll uh, with materials that I just basically could find out there in the woods uh, because I, I just you know I, I had the sort of story side in my head but I didn't really know what the game was at that point but then the game kind of grew out of that as I was like running around in the woods with a stall and posing it and playing with it and just messing with it and just figuring out like how could you actually use yarn in cool ways if you were made from it. You know? Awesome. Now what are some of the, the mechanics that you have in your game? Like how can you use yarn to advance throughout the game? Uh, well, basically, I mean, what we wanted to do is make something that was like pretty simple to interact with. So there's not like a lot of buttons to keep track of, uh, but you can use them in a lot of different ways because it's all physics based. So it's basically like once you have the foundation down, then you can sort of try to combine things and, and use things in different types of ways. But, but the core of it is that there's like a front end of the yarn that you can throw like a lasso uh, and there's a back end of the yarn that you can just like grab onto or attach to things. And by doing that, you can kind of use uh, the back end of the yarn like a safety line, or you could be swinging on it, uh, or like rappel down a ledge from it, or you could attach it to things. Uh, so uh, you could create uh, like simple mechanics out of that, or you can, uh, if you attach it to several things, you can create bridges between them, and then you can jump up on top of those and slingshot yourself. So it's it's basically like a, the basic interaction is pretty simple, but you can use it in lots of really creative ways. And because it's kind of like a sandbox, it's also like, uh, it's a bit up to you what you do with it, really. Awesome. Now, I, when I was playing, I noticed uh, two things with, uh, with the yarn. If I fell off of something, I could easily climb back up. Yeah. But then I noticed that there are also a lot of difficult uh, puzzles to it. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but it used uh, water and apples. How do you balance uh, the difficulty, but the easiness of the game at the same time? Yeah, I think, I think it's important that there's a challenge. I think it's super important because it is a symbolic game. It is about, you know, mending broken bonds. It's about reaching out. And you don't do that without putting some effort in. So, but obviously we, we want it to be like challenging but not frustrating. So basically what we do is just we watch a lot of people play and we iterate a lot and just try to make it hard in, in the right way. So it feels like rewarding when you pull it off. But it doesn't feel like you know you're <laughs> you're dumb because you didn't. <laughs> I'd say the environments in this game are absolutely gorgeous. Are they based off of any real life places? Uh, yes, they are. We basically base the whole game on on our own home. I come from the north of Sweden, and it's 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 the type of environment that you don't really see in a video game ever. So it was one of these things like. When I was making it, like when I was taking all these pictures and just running around in the woods with, with, with my little doll that I made, that's the point where I kind of realized that I want the game to look exactly like this. You know, I want it to be that same thing where you like get down on this level and really watch everything really up close and you're like sitting there with like the, the blueberries and the <laughs> all the bushes and trees and stuff uh, and just make the whole game about a celebration of kind of like the ordinary, I suppose. 
at least it's ordinary for us. But you know, it's not about these fantastical environments where you go to space or you go to like uh, I don't know something very out there. But it's about just looking at all the beautiful stuff that's out there, like just outside your door, like waiting for you to find it. Amazing. And finally, when can players get their hands on your game? Uh, we don't have a set release date yet, but it's uh, it's going to come out in the first quarter of next year. So it's we're getting there, uh, but we're not quite there yet. But.